Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Cyprus is another nail in the coffin of the Eurozone experiment. ECB needs 800 more staff to supervise Eurozone banks. Cypriot bank heist is all about saving the Euro, not Cyprus. Germany calls for increased EU powers. Plus, even scientists are cooling on climate change. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, we're delighted our investigative researcher John took time out away from interpreting Euro Elvish legalese and cast his eye on the kleptocrat Ronnie Biggs wannabe's Cypriot bank job. This article takes a pragmatic view of the situation but ultimately asks where this might lead. Meanwhile, back leg three of the Euro Bureau three-legged milking stool, the kleptocrats are making light work of splurging the EU budget on more public sector staffing positions. No doubt these will come with legal impunity, pensions for life, etc. In this article, the ECB reports that it requires 800 more staff to supervise the Eurozone banks. Perhaps I could recommend a job advertisement in the job centres of Cyprus, as I heard that the Troika just shut down one of their banks, plunging hundreds of bank workers into unemployment. Let's get down to the nitty-gritty. This whole financial banking collapse is in direct opposition of the will of the people, and it seems the only ones reaping any benefits from poleaxing the Eurozone economies are the banksters that blew the cash on the derivative sweepstakes in the first instance. This article considers the blinkered and belligerent attitude of the EU kleptocrats who appear to be prepared to inflict all manner of painful austerity and taxation on their peoples to keep their federal United States of Europe project alive. The Baroness is back in the house and our High Priestess of the European Towers of Mordor is echoing the calls of the Dark Lord himself, Manuel Barroso. This article reports on moves from within the diplomatic community in Germany for increased EU powers, leading the charge is none other than our unelected appointee, Baroness Ashton. Today in our letters section, Anne Widdicombe writes on the topic of climate change. In her letter, Anne points out that there is a woeful lack of supporting evidence for the global warming hypothesis. Thanks to Anne for taking the time to write this letter and being clear and open on her position. Personally, it's staggering that this carbon-based global warming hypothesis is still garnering so much support. In scientific terms, everything is a theoretical hypothesis, and whilst observations to con continue to support the theory, then it remains. However, you only need one piece of observable evidence that breaks the theory and all bets are off. The killer observation with carbon-based global warming is that our planet is not isolated to this warming. Mars, Saturn, Jupiter and even Uranus and Neptune have been experiencing periods of planetary warming. Today in our video library, whilst the EU IMF ECB Troika make press waves with confusing messages, the agenda all along is to levy billions of euros from Cypriot savers. In this episode, Max and Stacy expose the fact that the insiders know ahead of time what's really going on, and he discusses the mechanisms for this. Max also interviews investigative journalist Leah McGrath Goodman, author of The Asylum, Inside the Rise and Ruin of the Global Oil Market. In her book, Leah has gathered evidence supporting the claims that the 2008 oil price spike was indeed market manipulation by NYMEX traders. Many thanks to Peter Simmons, who messaged me directly with this interesting set of observations about policies from the former USSR. Didn't care about the suffering their politics and ideologies inflicted on their people. Suppression of national identities. Removal of national governments they didn't like. Rubber stamp parliaments. Run by unelected presidents and apparatchiks. Seizure of private assets for the greater good. Rewriting of history and indoctrination of school children, used media to spread propaganda, were institutionally corrupt and resulted in an economic 
basket case. Thanks, Peter, for those very interesting historical points about what led to the collapse of the USSR. That's all from me at the Unit Nightly News. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the EUnit. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus anytime. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the word section of our website. Also, you can join us in our live question time style online show, The Unit Interactive. Broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com, join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, The Unit, on Google+. Links to the community pages are below. Rick Timmis, for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.